The most important things first. If you're here needing help getting a calf pulled, go to the 3 minute and 15 second point where I begin to talk about how to get that calf pulled. To everyone else, welcome back. My hopes are that you not only come for some education and entertainment, but also to see events or activities in the videos that cause you to think about life in general. I would really like to hear your thoughts and or philosophy. Please write them in the comments section below. Let's philosophize together. Today I have a young heifer that is needing assistance to give birth. Just in case you don't know, a heifer is usually a one plus and or two year old cow that hasn't had her first calf. I use surveillance cameras in my barns to monitor what is happening. After church I checked my phone to see how a heifer was doing that I brought in to monitor. I could see that she was starting, so I headed to the barn to see if I could help. Come along and help with the birthing process of this new baby. The birthing process is well underway. I usually watch them at this point, give them about 10 minutes or so, and see if they can do it on their own. If not, especially with a heifer, I like to get them in and get them some help as quickly as I can. I'm asking this heifer to go through a small door in the corner of the barn to access the maternity pen. She's never been through this door before. I allow myself to get distracted with my phone and push her too much. I need to turn her back around and slow down. If you give a cow a chance to look without causing her too much stress, she will use the thinking side of her brain rather than the flight side and see where she needs to go. By watching her ears, I can see that she has seen the opening and now I can get her the help that she needs. There might be something here that we could spend some time philosophizing about, but we'll move on to this birthing process. I bought this maternity pin from Pearson Livestock Equipment. There will be a link in the description below. Having the correct equipment and tools makes it much easier to get any job done well. The two openings work well in my situation. I am able to use a small gate to move her into the main portion of the pin. The big swing gate then allows me to move the heifer into a position that encourages her to look for a way to escape the pin through the self catch head gate. This is a self-catch head gate. You open it just enough that the cow can get her head through the gate, but then her shoulders push the gate shut as she moves forward, locking her head in the gate so that I can work on the cow safely. This is an OB or a maternity chain. I prefer the chain rather than a rope because it's less likely to slip off the calf's leg when you have to really pull hard. A rope will sure work better than, a, than your bare hands though. Also, an OB chain can be purchased with a handle that helps you get a little better grip. There will be links in the description below to help you find the chain and a mechanical cap puller similar to the one that I use later. I need to rupture the membrane that has been the calf's home for about the last nine months. This amniotic fluid is green, which tells me that the calf is stressed and has defecated as a result. Seeing this is an indicator that I need to get her out, uh, out of there pretty quickly. I know that the calf is alive because when I get a hold of her, she draws her leg back into the cow. Having at least one foot helps me to know that the process might possibly be an easier one. When I get a hold of the first foot, I give it a pull. I do this for two reasons. First, I want to have as much of the leg showing as I can so that it will be easier to get the OB chain on the leg. This really needs to be above the dew claws and the ankle. The second reason is that the shoulders are most likely where this calf is hung up. If I pull the first leg, then that shoulder will slide through the pelvis. It is good to see the bottom of the calf's foot is facing toward the ground. I can also reach inside and ensure that I can find the calf's nose and the second front leg. This means that the calf is in an upright position and should be easy to deliver. I learned how to pull calves with the help of my dad and uncles and through the school of hard knocks. I don't recommend that school. 
I also purchased a book titled Essential Guide to Calving by Heather Smith Thomas. It can be bought on Amazon and I'll put a link for it in the description below. Once that I have the first leg secured, I start on the second leg. Because that shoulder is still further back in the pelvis, it is a little harder to access to get the chain on. The, the cow can help quite a bit with this though. As the cow pushes with each contraction, I can get access to the second leg to get the chain on. Once the chain is on, and I am absolutely positive that the head is aligned with the legs, I can try to pull a second shoulder through. If it won't come, I can then use the calf puller and combine pulling action with leverage. I crank on the ratchet and then push the handle down to the ground. Pulling the half calf down rather than straight back will help it move out much easier. If the cow is standing, it's much easier to get a good angle, but if she's on her side, the same principle applies. Try to pull the calf back and down so that it arches out. The second shoulder has come through the pelvis and the next obstacle is pushing out through the vulva. You may f need to help here also by trying to stretch the cow if it is a little tight. Once the head pops through, you are most of the way home. I can usually get rid of the mechanical puller and pull the calf on out. This calf was a little different. It got hip locked and despite my pulling a couple of different angles, I couldn't get her to budge. You can't leave one hanging here very long because the oxygen supply is now compromised because the umbilical cord is pinched between the cow's pelvis and the calf's body. I reattached the puller and once the calf's hips popped through the pelvis, she came right out. Thank heavens this calf is still alive. As soon as she hits the ground, she takes her very first breath and blinks her eyes. I wasn't diligent enough in preparing for this calf to come. I should have had some bedding straw down to keep her from being born in this dry manure. But I got her cleaned up, my OB chains off, and made sure she was breathing okay. You can see the yellow fecal matter on her hind legs. You hope not to see this, but she's fine, and later her mother passed the afterbirth without any infections inside of her. That's something that you really want to monitor pretty closely. It is important also that you get the mother back with her calf as quickly as possible. The great thing about this self-catch head gate is that I can pop the back lever and release her back into the pen. If she chose to push forward rather than back, she could not have gotten out. I love this pen system. It's time to throw the bedding in and get this calf in a little cleaner environment. You really hate to have them lay in this manure very long. There's so many pathogens that live in this kind of environment that you really want to get these babies up and clean and onto a safe place. Now this heifer is very gentle and I knew her pretty well. But you really need to be careful when you go in with one of these young cows. You never know how protective they're going to be. We have some that get quite protective of their babies and I wouldn't walk in here for anything in the world with them. And I'll get this bedding down and you'll see how resilient these calves are. This cow's going to step right on that baby's hind leg.
Ouch. It's funny to look at that baby. She just shakes her head and says, man, that hurt. I can pick her up now and put her on this clean bed of straw. I use the straw to kind of clean this baby up a little bit. This is the same thing that would happen if a mother was licking the baby off. Most generally, a cow will do this, but heifers are not always quite in tune with what needs to go on. They're more caught up in the experience that they just had rather than taking care of this baby. Cleaning this baby off simulates what mother would do, and this helps get the blood flow and get this baby ready and excited for the rest of her life. I'm going to keep mother and baby in overnight, so I'll put some extra bedding in and make this pen a little bit bigger. I want to ensure that they're both going to pair up and be ready for the coming years. The next most important thing that I need to do is to ensure that this baby gets life-saving colostrum. I wait and watch and listen, and before long, I hear music to my ears. Life is a lot like the birthing process. We find ourselves in a comfortable place where all seems to be well. Maybe a little bit tight, but we're content. And before long, the pressures begin to climb. We realize that we're not content with our situation and things must change. But change is not always easy and we're not exactly sure which way we should go or what we should do. If we are wise, we will look to those that we can trust that we've received good counsel from in the past and seek their advice. Too often pride or fear or both prevent us from accepting their advice and counsel and we struggle along and don't progress. Happiness in light is always just a choice away and like this calf, if we choose to accept the help, life will once again be grand. Thanks so much for spending your time with us. Please like, subscribe, and comment below.